Okay. 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 <coughs> okay, so a few students complained that I kind of uh, did in a messy way this uh, randomized select. So let's just quickly review before we move uh, <coughs> to, sorry, <coughs> to the deterministic <coughs> solution to this problem. So <coughs> you are given n elements and you have to select i-th smallest element. So the idea is to use divide and conquer, uh, which is kind of um, one half of the randomized uh, quick sort, because you always operate on just one side <coughs> of, uh, of the partition, right? Uh, so how do we proceed? So we choose a random uh, pivot, right? And then we reorder the array taking um, uh, so that all elements on the left of it, of the pivot are smaller or equal uh, than the pivot and all elements on the right are bigger uh, than the pivot, right? And then if you were just lucky to, um, so then what do we do? We compute how many elements there are on the left. And if it happens that this number element of the element is exactly i, then you know that exactly the pivot is, the, is your uh, um, i-th element. Otherwise, if i is smaller than k, then you recursively apply your algorithm to the right. And um, opposite, uh, if uh, i is bigger than k, right, then uh, uh, if i is uh, bigger than k, no, no, sorry, if i is bigger than k, then you apply to all elements on the right, and if i is, uh, oh, let's see, did I mess it up here? So if i is smaller than k, your elements are on the left. Ah, yes, uh, in fact, so it's, uh, they are among uh, p up to q minus one on the left, and uh, otherwise, if i is bigger, it uh, resides on the right hand side of the partition. So you recursively apply this, but now you are looking not for the i element, but i minus k element to account that you threw away uh, uh, k uh, smaller elements uh, uh, of the left side of the partition. So uh, clearly the worst case runtime is uh, quadratic, right? Because you might be just peeling element by element if you always choose uh, uh, pivot that is uh, either the smallest or the largest in the array, but that's very unlikely. So um, in this case, of course, the algorithm will run in a quadratic time, but in most of the cases, right, the two partitions, just by law of large numbers, will be reasonably balanced. So. Uh, we do this uh, we, uh, with the assumption to make things a little bit simpler with the assumption that all the elements in the array are distinct. Later we will see what we do when we have repetitions. So we call the partition a balanced partition. If the ratio between the number of elements in the smaller piece and the number of elements in the right hand side where the larger, uh, well, sorry, the, the number of elements uh, in the smaller size of the, uh, the chunk that is of smaller size is not compared to the number of elements uh, in the larger chunk is not in the ratio uh, worse than one to nine, right? So we allow that one side of the partition can be at most nine times larger than the smaller side of the partition. So what's the probability that we will get a balanced partition when we choose the pivot, right? You mess it up if you choose either 10% of the largest elements or 10% of the smallest elements because only in these two cases, once one of the two, part sides, uh, two pieces will be 
uh, larger than nine, nine times the, uh, the other, right? You have to pick either top 10% uh, or uh, top bottom percent. So the probability to end up with a balanced partition is 8 over 10. Okay, so, so let's now find the expected number of uh, partitions between two consecutive balanced partitions. Right, so we assume that we did a partition and it's unbalanced. Uh, we did another partition and it's again unbalanced. We want, and finally say we hit a balanced partition, we want to estimate how many times on average you produce an uh, unbalanced partition. So probability to get another balanced partition at the first shot, right, is eight over 10. Probability to need two partitions means the first one will be unbalanced. Probability of that is two over 10. Second one is balanced, so this, uh, you have two shots with probability two over 10 <coughs> times eight over 10. So in general, the probability that you will need k partitions to end up with another balanced partition is that you failed k many, k minus one many times. So that will be the probability times probability of the balanced partition, right? So we then uh, expected number of partitions between two balanced partitions will be given by this formula. One partition uh, with just one splitting right with probability eight over 10, two splittings with this probability and so forth. And uh, this is eight over 10 times this sum. And then I showed you last time a couple of ways uh, to evaluate this sum. Here is the simplest way. You uh, represent this as this triangular double sum, right? Each of the uh, layers is a geometric progression that you can easily uh, sum. And then the, fortunately the results are also yet another geometric pro progression which you can also sum. And, uh, you get uh, eight, uh, 10 over eight squared. So then the expected number, you remember S is just the sum, but we have to multiply it with 10 over eight. And lo and behold, we get, oh, this looks fishy. Did I mess it up? Uh, because, or maybe that's right. Uh, 10 over eight. Hmm. Okay, so by the way, I didn't tell you that. Uh, I give extra credit for any even plain simple typo that you find in the slides. Uh, if you email me, I give you extra credit and then if you are close to say high distinction and you are missing a couple of points, extra credit can bring you over the hump, um, right? So um, if it's substantial error, right, which happens from time to time to my embarrassment, you get lots of extra credit, but even for typos, uh, uh, you get extra credit. Why is this justifiable? Because uh, it means you are reading the notes, <laughs> and moreover, you are reading them carefully, right? So you deserve uh, uh, the extra credit. Uh, okay, so I believe this calculation is right, uh, uh, so on average, you will have less than two partitions before you hit um, between two balanced partitions. And so the average run time is then computed in this way, right? Uh, it's two times n, n is uh, before the inputs shrink, right? Um, after one balanced partition, the size of the array becomes eight over 10 then it becomes eight over 10 squared and so forth. And lo and behold, you get yet another geometric partition, a, a geometric series that sums up to 10 N, which means that uh, um, uh, this is just another way to do this, <coughs> um, which um, um, shows that uh, the runtime on average of the algorithm is linear with small constants, in fact. So that's the algorithm you use in industry. Yes? Um, why is the E um, equal 10 to 8 over S, not 8 times 10 to 
this, this is exactly what I thought. So the, I think that might be, you know, maybe I had one beer too much when I was writing the notes. <laughs> So S is, uh, lo and behold, I think, oh my God, so it is, it's 8 over 10 times, I'm not, uh, okay, so you get extra credit if, uh, if I did mess it up, um, and uh, so, Oh, yeah, 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 so it's, uh, this comes, but this is wrong, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, it's 8 divided by 10, yeah. and this, ah, okay, so extra uh, point for you. Send me an email so that I can S do that. One. Sorry? S becomes 1. S becomes, mm, uh, that's... S okay, so obviously there is something fishy in the uh, kingdom of Denmark. So uh, send me, uh, send me, uh, so uh, I'll correct it uh, uh, and I promise I'll stop drinking beer. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, let's jointly debug this. So where did we tacitly assume that all ele elements are distinct? Uh, think about this at home. What is the probability of choosing the pivot so that the partition is balanced in this case? But in general, in, if you do quick sort, uh, if, uh, say, all the elements are equal, uh, how fast will be your quick sort? Uh? Each time you pick a pivot, you will just keep peeling one by one, so it will run in quadratic time, right? How would you fix quicksort without slowing it down seriously so that it runs in n log n in case where there are lots of equals? How do you do that? Well, one idea would be instead of building three partition, two partitions, we build three partitions. One that is for elements smaller than the pivot, another partition for elements that are equal to the pivot, and one partition for the elements larger than the pivot. Do you think that's a good idea? Yes. No. <laughs> Why not? Hmm? Exactly. You know, the problem with that is building three partitions is much harder if you look how the partitions are built with quick sort just by single swap. Building three partitions is much harder. So you would ruin the runtime uh, of quick sort for general purpose. What is then the trick? How do you do it? Yes. Okay, that sounds, yeah, that might be, there is a trick of, to that effect, but there is something even simpler, yes? Randomize the whole thing? Well, how do you randomize? You randomize the, uh, by picking the pivot, but if there are lots of repetitions, the partition is guaranteed to be safe, they are all equal. Uh, then no matter how you randomize, you are in trouble. What do you do? How do you fix that in a efficient way that will not at all slow down the, pivot, the quick sort? Almost for nothing. Say it again. Hey, how do you do that? How do you make sure that half of the equals go to the left and half of the equals to the right? Hmm? Make a random choice. Invoking random number generator is expensive. Exactly. Whenever you hit, you put a little flag. If it's uh, equal to the pivot, 
and flag is equal to zero goes to the left uh, and flip the flag. If it's equal uh, uh, to the pivot and the flag is one, go to the right. Uh, so this will minimally slow down the, the quick sort uh, uh, and would guarantee good performance when uh, um, uh, when uh, uh, there are lots of repetitions. Okay, here is a question for you. You you would need to sort. Uh, yes. Uh, would it be another comparison? Uh, yeah, but, but that's, I guess, that's uh, reasonably uh, cheap. I don't know exactly what instructions set is implemented, but I guess this is reasonably, uh, reasonably cheap. Building tree is kind of complicated for the bookkeeping of the boundaries. Uh, and, shuff, uh, uh, and moving things around is the most expensive part. Moving things involves, it's really the expensive part. So you want to minimize unnecessary um, locomotion, right? Now, you have, assume that you have to sort a whole bunch of arrays that are, uh, whose entries are random. Who will run faster, quick sort or randomized quick sort? Exactly, so um, if, uh, if uh, the elements are random, then uh, you don't need to use randomized quick sort because things are already random, right? So, and you don't have to invoke a random number generator. So um, th that's, uh, so uh, what is uh, this uh, sort of uh, this tweak when we send half of equal to the left, half of equal to the right? This still won't help us if the elements are almost, uh, if the array is almost sorted. Uh, if the arrays are happen to be almost sorted and you are using quick sort, which one will you use? Randomized quick sort or just uh, standard quick sort? Uh, Randomized, exactly, because otherwise you will be picking either the smallest or the largest element all the time. Okay, so now, um, ba -ba -ba -bum. okay, now interesting thing is, it was an open question for quite a while, if you can find a median in linear time, right? Because standard way, or simple way of finding median would be to sort the array. Uh, and uh, lo and behold, we saw that randomized runs in linear time. But the question is, can you do it deterministically in linear time? And it was open for quite a while until it was solved in 1972 by Manuel Blum, uh, Floyd, uh, Pratt, Rivest, and Tarjan. So what, what is uh, this algorithm, what, what, what's interesting in, about this algorithm immediately? What do you think? It can run in linear time, but the, you can tell that this is something really uh, interesting because uh, very few algorithm have uh, uh, the names of how many? One, two, three, four, five celebrities. Uh, all of these people are extremely famous computer scientists, uh, so it took five of them to beat uh, uh, linear time problem uh, order statistics algorithm. And that's what I'm going to show you now. It's an extremely uh, pretty algorithm, but it is useless. <laughs> Yes, and this often happens that pretty things are useless and ugly things are very uh, useful. Uh, why, what makes it uh, useless? So, look, so randomized is expected linear time. 
uh, deterministic is guaranteed linear time, not just on average, but always. How can it be that it's useless then? Bad constant factors. Bad constant factors. Beautiful. That's exactly right. So uh, that's important. You know, sometimes we get complacent with asymptotics, but just what we see with uh, this generalization of Karatsuba algorithm, things that asymptotically run faster can be useless because the constants can be large. You see, this randomized uh, order selection algorithm, just think of quick sort, is extremely fast because all the loops are extremely tight. There is very little moving elements around. So this makes essentially quick sort unbeatable for general purpose sorting. Uh, uh, so uh, by, for the very same reason, this is why randomized uh, order selection is the algorithm of choice. And because as you will see now, linear time algorithm always runs in C times N, but it's useless because C is, is actually quite large. But as a trick, it's absolutely colossal. It's one of my favorite uh, uh, algorithms, despite being useless. I mean, most of the algorithms that I produce are also useless, so I shouldn't complain. Okay, so let me see, save, and then we do this. Uh, no, no, this is not what I wanted to do. Bear with me. Uh, when I was your age, I was still mostly using a slide ruler. Slide <coughs> rule, how do you call it? Second, uh, is it uh, showing folder? I'm not uh, uh, terribly, okay, so view. Uh, full screen mode, and here we are. Okay, so we want to find n elements. So we are given n elements. You want to find the i-th smallest element. So what when you do the randomized version, the problem that you can encounter for some inputs is that pivot is bad, that you chose pivot in a way that makes uh, the partitions very unbalanced, right? So the trick is, so what is the best pivot to choose, if you could? The middle one. The middle one. But you are exactly designing an algorithm to choose a middle one, right? So it's kind of. Vicious circle. Well, the trick is uh, reduce it to choosing the middle one, but over array of much smaller size. So the trick is uh, you will pick the pivot uh, using the very same algorithm, recursively calling it, but on an array of much smaller size. So this is how you do it. Uh, it's very simple and uh, intuitive. So split the numbers in groups of five, any way you please. Uh, and then order elements in each group. This is all doable in linear time. So you split the groups of five. The last group can be smaller, right? If the number is not divisible by five. And then with each, within each group, uh, Sort them by hand, by insertion sort, say, right? Now you get a matrix that looks like this. They are ordered in increasing order when you go down. And then what you do is you consider the middle part, right? What do you know now? Everything. Uh, on the top is uh, uh, smaller than the corresponding element uh, in the middle, and everything on the bottom is larger than the element in the middle, okay? Now what you do, 
Now you call recursively your very own algorithm, algorithm that you are designing to find the median of the middle portion and you pick that as a pivot. You split and now you proceed exactly as we did in the randomized case. So how do, what's the trick? You split your elements in groups of five. Sort each group by hand. Take the middle elements, the medians of these groups, and then call your algorithm to find the median of that middle group. What do you achieve in this way? You achieve, where is the, here it is. What you achieve is this. First, because this is median, all of these guys will be smaller than the pivot. And then by extension, all also the guys above will be smaller than the pivot because these guys were sorted by hand. <coughs> so every, each of these elements is smaller than the element, their corresponding element in the middle. And here on the right, all the elements below the middle line will be larger than the pivot. So how big is, uh, are the partitions? Partition that contains small element will definitely contain, what is this? Uh, uh, these many elements that are in this balloon and the larger partition will contain these many elements. So how, uh, what does this mean? Well, here you have n divided by five because the number of columns is, each column has five elements. So the number of uh, middle elements is n divided by five. So each half then contains n divided by 10 elements. But then you have three layers of such elements. So each balloon contains at least three n divided by 10 elements. Thus, the partitions are guaranteed to be uh, balanced. So how then you, do you proceed? So in each round of iteration, right, you, fo you split them into five, you uh, take the middle row, apply recursively your algorithm to find the median, use it as a pivot, uh, and then choose wherever, whichever, uh, um, depending on the total number of elements in each partition. If uh, i is smaller than the number partition on the left, you choose that side, otherwise you choose the right side. How fast is this uh, algorithm? Well, we reduced an algorithm for finding i-th element among n into an algorithm of finding the median for n over um, five many elements because this is how many elements the middle row uh, contains. So to find your pivot, so this is the work needed to find your pivot. So t of n is then the work to find of the pivot plus recursively applied to the appropriate partition, side of the partition. And because each side is at least 3n over 10, right? It means that the larger side is at most 7n over 10. And everything that I described uh, is actually done in linear time, splitting things uh, sorting by hand in, within each column and so forth. And now, of course, master theorem doesn't quite apply, but you prove then the T of n is smaller than 11C times n. And lo and behold, if you substitute, uh, uh, this is essentially by uh, induction, um, you assume that this is true and this is also true because both of these are smaller than n. And then when you substitute here after a simple arithmetic, you get 
that lo and behold, uh, uh, t of n is, is smaller than, and somehow n is missing here. Uh, I should give myself an extra credit point. <laughs> okay, so in fact, this algorithm runs in linear time. But first of all, this 11 is not that small. And c is large, because this cn, it involves splitting them into a group of five, sorting within each group, right? And then doing uh, the pivot business and sorting, pushing everything to the left and the right and so forth. So this constant c is also quite large, right? So it's a very cute uh, algorithm, recursive algorithm, uh, but as I have mentioned, not everything pretty and clever is useful. Uh, so this is never used in practice because the randomized order selection beats uh, uh, the, this algorithm by a, you know, a huge uh, uh, factor. It runs just lightning fast. So this is really only kind of uh, interesting as, uh, uh, you know, the uh, lower bound for deterministic algorithm. It's in fact uh, uh, linear, but uh, it involves a lot of locomotion. So this is really not a very useful algorithm. Randomized beats it a piece of cake. So this is an example uh, why uh, uh, randomized algorithms are important, even though on particular cases uh, they can misbehave, uh, right? Uh, if the probability of this is sufficiently low, on average they tend to beat deterministic uh, algorithms, right? And we will soon see something called skip lists uh, which is essentially a replacement for binary search trees uh, that is randomized, so it can misbehave, but it misbehaves uh, uh, with very small probability. Uh, so uh, it essentially, increasingly randomized algorithms are uh, displacing a lot of uh, deterministic algorithms. So, OK, so that's, uh, um, I guess that's, uh, that's a good, uh, um, OK, so next time what we will do is uh, hashing, right? Randomized hashing. So assume that you are doing, uh, I give you a project and it involves using a hash function and you work in pairs, you produce your version of the algorithm and give it to your partner to evaluate it and vice versa. And you suspect that your partner is a jerk. So he will actually say, decompile your code, look which hash function you are using, and then he will cook up as inputs that produce ruinous behavior of your algorithm. How, if you knew in advance that this is what he is going to do, how would you defeat him so that uh, he cannot mess you up? <laughs> that may be the easiest and the best solution. Yeah, so assume that you are stuck with that person. Right, you know, stuck like in being married or something like that. So, <laughs> so uh, tell me, what would you do? How do you make it bulletproof that uh, whatever he does, he cannot defeat your function no matter what he does? Uh, yes. Well, that's uh, a little bit uh, uh, complicated. What is the easiest, what you cannot possibly beat? Yes? You can salt your hashes, which means you take like a small string, which is the same um, when you, like you print it every time. So it's not randomly generated. It's like, it could be their name, or it could be like whatever. And if you just go to plain text, like next to their password. And what you, sorry, next to their hash. What you do is when you're hashing their password, 
Okay, so in fact, the, the trick is uh, uh, to use uh, a randomized hashing, which means that uh, before you run your program on a multiple inputs, right, the program chooses some parameter, some key uh, randomly, and then freezes it for the life of the uh, of the uh, of, the, of the application run, right? So, and uh, uh, it turns out uh, the trick how you do that, as you will see, is extremely uh, useful and it involves uh, uh, scalar products uh, and something that you will, you will also see in the fast Fourier transform business. And it's also used uh, for dimensionality reduction in databases, so it will be a uh, very important trick, but uh, that's all I can tell you now. We have to introduce some machinery in order to do it, so it's good time to stop now and go have a beer. <laughs>